Hello everyone, it's Kevin with VintiqueSound.com and today I want to demonstrate exactly how to export your entire Cubase project to hand it over to someone else, such as a mixing engineer or a mastering engineer or someone you're doing a collaboration with. So it is a very easy process, but sometimes people uh, send files over and that person who receives it finds that there's missing audio files or there's missing uh, information that they can't actually see in the project once they open up. And that's because not everything is being sent in the project as it should. I get asked quite a bit from some of my uh, clients that I mix and master for on how to send me the files. So what I typically ask for is if they have a Cubase project is to send me that Cubase project that may help in reducing my time in setting up the project and get it, getting everything organized and ready to go. But I do find that um, from time to time, there's files that are missing, there's some sort of miscommunication in the way that I explain it to them. So this video is going to shortcut the entire process and show exactly on my screen how to do it. So I have this project opened up right here. There is MIDI data, there is audio files, there is uh, MIDI instruments like a Groove Agent drum kit. And each one of these pads has an associated sample in it. The samples themselves are pulled from my Cubase VST sound library, which is on a completely separate drive than my actual project folder for this project. If I go into this Cubase project and simply send this entire collection of files, it is not guaranteed that this person that opens up the project will be able to see all of these samples, nor is it guaranteed that they will see the samples that I've dragged in. It is probably the case that they will receive all the recorded audio files because by default, there is a, a dedicated audio folder for anything that's bounced or anything that is recorded into the Cubase session. If you froze a track, it's going to generate a freeze file and it will, it'll actually create a new folder called freeze and the audio will be in here. So it should include anything that's frozen, anything that's recorded. But that's not always the case because it depends on where you began your project in. Every time you start a project, Cubase will prompt you for a location on where to save all the files. And if you by chance save it in one file and then go ahead and click file, save your project into a completely different folder path, all of those files are just gonna be completely detached. So the way to fix this is to go into your Cubase project, click on file, click on backup project, and then you're going to decide on your folder path. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Rhythm Ace. This is the artist. This is my uh, artist name. Uh, Bootstrap Blues is the song. And we're just going to call this one Backup because we're creating a backup. It's going to go into this folder. Select that folder. And now I get to, to do a, a list of different options. So I can even rename the project to Backup. And then there's going to be a few different options to, uh, to check off. One that's not related to the export. This is keeping this current project active. That's fine. Minimize audio files. I believe this has to do with shrinking the size of the audio files in whatever way possible. You can go ahead and click that if you want. If you do not want to minimize the audio files, you do have the option to make the direct offline processing permanent. So that's going to shrink the total project size because it's no longer saving extra data to be able to go back on your direct offline processing. 
And I would suggest to always check the remove unused files because it will not include files that have nothing to do with your current project. That will minimize your project file size. And if you're trying to send that person the video file that you're working with in your project, you're going to want to uncheck this do not backup video. Checking this will not include any video files in your project. Then you're going to want to hit OK. It does its magic. It does the work. Exports everything to that new folder path. And now when we go into that designated project folder location, you can see that it has a single Cubase project file as opposed to a whole list of backup project files. So in that case, it is actually shrinking the total amount of files you would be sending. It's captured all the audio image files, which is important for Cubase to represent the audio files visually in the project. And it has captured all the different audio files from every single file path that's associated with this project. It's captured all those files, brought them into one single folder, which is the audio folder, and now anyone who receives this backup project file set that I've created, they'll be able to open this project up and have access to everything. They'll be able to see all the audio, all the MIDI, uh, everything. The only thing that this person will not be able to see is, let's, I'm just going to give some examples here. Let's say I opened up, instead of, Groove Agent. Instead of having a Groove Agent instrument, let's say I opened up Battery and I had Native Instruments Battery as my drum program tool or my instrument. If the person who opens the project does not themselves have that same version of Native Instruments Battery, then they will not be able to open this project and use that instance of battery. All the MIDI data here will not trigger any sounds because they don't have the license to actually use that instance of battery. But there is a way around this. So if you run into that issue, what you can do is you can freeze the track that has the instruments that the other person is not going to have access to. So you can freeze the track by clicking this button here, freeze instrument channel, and you can choose to freeze only the instrument or you can choose to freeze the instrument and the channels. Freezing the instrument allows the person to have access to all the plugins and all the processing and sends and returns that are on the channels. And freezing the instrument and channels means that the person would not have access to all the processing, the plugins, the EQ, the sends, and everything on that channel. But if by chance they froze a channel and they did indeed have access to, for instance, Native Instruments Battery, they could just unfreeze that and then they would have access to the instrument again. Now, of course, this is also the case for any third-party plugins. So in my instance, I use a lot of uh, Waves plugins, Sound Toys, Native Instruments, different ones. And I think many people don't have access to as many plugins that I have. So if I was to send them my projects and they do not have the exact same plugins that I have on these channels, then again, I would work around that by freezing this track and I would have to include the channels because that would then freeze the audio down to the inserts, the EQ and everything. And it would include a frozen down piece of audio for them to play back instead of the raw instrument and audio going through the actual plugins that they do not own. Because when you do not own the plugin that's on the channel, Cubase will open it up and it will give you an error and it will probably not even play the audio that's uh, associated 
with the insert plugin. It probably won't even play the audio, so you would have to remove the plugin, and then you would lose all the saved data, such as where the position of the EQ points are. All that data would be lost, and you'd have to start from scratch. Okay, so I hope that clarifies things. If it did not, please leave a comment down below and I can always redo this video and make some tweaks, make things a little bit more clear, maybe a little bit more succinct, reorganize the thoughts and the way that I deliver this video if necessary. If not, hit a thumbs up and also leave a comment below just indicating that this video made sense and did not complicate things. <laughs> So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.